Good day. This is Jeff Robertson with Penton Audio USA and Atis Electronics. This is a quick tutorial video on how to actually update the firmware and software in your UAP G2 digital signal processor. It's a very quick and easy uh, procedure and yet a lot of people get confused because it actually requires two steps when normally they would think it would be one. Number one, I have here the latest UAP software that I downloaded off their website. Uh, it is version 1.0.4.78. Uh, a lot of our previous tutorial videos actually were using 4.72 or 7.1 and this is actually the first tutorial video which is being completed early July 2012 that is using the latest greatest 7.8. Some of the features that we added in 7.8 are more scheduling options as far as message playback for um, you know the intervals like minutely, hourly, um, daily and stuff like that to make that a little more streamlined. Um, and another feature is when it powers up, it'll actually look at the current state of the control inputs to make sure that it will switch to whatever preset, if that happens to be triggering presets, well, upon power up, where before it wouldn't do it, it'd have to actually be activated or triggered after it was powered up. So anyway, I'm going to launch the software. Let's double click in here. Remember, that's 4.78 on the software. And I have actually physically connected up to my demo UAP, which has purposely not been updated. So one of the first things I need to do, as you do when you hook up to any machine, is I'll go to Tools and I'll establish my Ethernet link. Um, this is the default IP address of every UAP shipped from our uh, corporate headquarters up in Pawtucket, Rhode Island at 192.168.100.6. So first thing I always like to do instead of trying to connect directly up is I just search to make sure I'm actually connected and we're all talking. And by the way, we have a tutorial video on how to connect and compile and configure your Windows IP7. We have two videos on those on uh, YouTube as well. So if you're unfamiliar with this procedure, please feel free to grab those videos and take a quick look. They're very short. So there's my machine right there. Um, and I'll select it and I'll just say connect. And we're connected up. So now I know I'm talking to the machine. Now, there's a couple of ways that I can look if I just wanted to double check and see what version's actually in the machine. Um, I can actually go to this hotkey where it says version. I'm just hovering over it. Or I can go up to window, I mean, I'm sorry, up to help. And there's also a version link up there. So I'll just click on version. And here's the firmware I'm running. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's not 4.0.78 because it's actually in two different pieces. You got a DSP and you got the firmware. But .78 is what I'm really looking at. And this is my machine. If I had multiple UAPs in my network, they would all be listed in separate columns, up to 12 Macs in any one single system. So I got UAP1, so the first thing I want to say is, let's read and see what's in there. So it's going to look, and I can see I've got .71 for the firmware, and the DSP is 1.0.1.0, which really doesn't mean much to me. All I know is I've got 7.1 there, i got 7.8 here, this isn't matching up, this two is matching up, so... I want to make sure I update the machine to the current software that I'm running on my laptop. So make sure I don't have any problems, any compile errors or connection errors like that. So I will close this and we will go up here to tools and I will go to update. So that's right in the tools window and the very first one is update. So now when I do update, there's a couple of things. One is it automatically will go to my 1.0.4.78 file and it has two main files in here that need to be updated. One is my DSP, as you recall from when we were looking at it at the read, and the other one is the MCU, uh, which is, this is what I'm using on mine, and you can see MCU update, and we got DSP update. These are the two main files. The rest are just remotes, so if you have remotes out there hooked up to your system, you have to do the exact same thing to your remotes. I don't have any remotes hooked up to mine right here. So the first thing I want to do is my DSP, I click on the machine, which is actually named Ernie, and I apologize for that. I was just doing a training demo last week. And so we will connect this up, and I'll say update. And there we go. We are updating. And it says, do I want to reset? And I'll just go ahead and say yes. And I'm actually looking at my machine. You'll see the lights go off, and then they come back on as it goes through its boot up process. So this may take a second. Okay. Now we're all set up with that one. Now the next thing I want to do is go up here to my tab and click on the MCU tab. And I know I'm looking at my MCU update for 4.78. I'll select the machine I want to talk to, which is my only demo machine here. They would all be labeled here. And I'll click update on that. 
and we'll go through its really quick upload process and then it should ask me if the machine if I want to reset the machine and which I wish it say yes all right yes I want to reset and it's going through its reset and reboot process all right now I have just updated my demo machine so let's just go up to version well I'll just go up here to the quick link remember I can go to help and click on that and go to version or I'll just go to my hotkey here and I got my UAP one I will do a read and as you can see now I'm using dot seven eight and these both match up so now I know I'm completely updated and I'm in sync with my firmware on my computer and the firmware and software that's residing within the uh, UAP digital processor so there you go it's that easy uh, to update your current firmware uh, as a general rule of practice what I like to do and remember you do not lose the design that's in the software if you go from really 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 early ones where if you're watching these videos you really won't have to some really later ones there is a potential you could lose some stuff but for the most part you should not lose any of your design or any of your functions in your design. We just add features. They're not big bug fixes or major rewrites of the software or the firmware. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, just remember, go to our website at www.penton-usa.com or give us a call and talk to any of the tech support people. Once again, I'm Jeff Robertson with Penton Audio. Thank you very much and happy trails.